the prisons of Iran? Is all of this sexual humiliation being inflicted on the Ummah of Muhammad by accident? Are these random events taking place by a few rogues? Not at all! This is deliberate policy! We thought that the Muslims would have woke up when we attacked Afghanistan, but they did not. We thought that they would have woken up when we attacked Iraq. And they would have overthrown some of the pro-American regimes like the Jordanian regime, but they did not. The Muslims are really snoring. So we've got to do something more to really get them vexed. That's why the sexual humiliation of the prisons of Iraq. That's why they were parading naked prostitutes before our people in Guantanamo. This booklet in your hand has an appendix at the back which comes from one of the inmates who was released from Guantanamo. And because he was a British national, he was a black Jamaican incidentally. A black Jamaican who converted to Islam. He was able to tell the story about Guantanamo. Read that story at the back of this. I don't think the Express will publish it. And you see, this is not a random accidental policy, this is by design. Its purpose is to try to get the Muslim world to wake up, overthrow some of the pro-American regimes, get some Muslims so mad that they will now become terrorists. Can we manufacture some terrorists among these Muslims, get them so mad, lead them to acts of terrorism? It is when these things occur, when the world can see that yes, there is some danger, some threat from the world of Islam now, that Israel will have what it, Israel will present as cause as well. Some justification for a big war which has already been planned long, long ago. So that is what the white world order is now doing. Helping Israel so that Israel can wage a big war. When Israel wages that big war and becomes the ruling state in the world, then the world order of Gog and Magog will now become a means through which Israel can effectively control the world. But Israel will rule the world for a day which is like a week, a day like a week, which some mathematician will do the calculation, maybe it amounts about 30 years or so, 40 years or so. At the end of that time, the masjid would have been destroyed, Masjid al -Aqsa. the temple would have been rebuilt, and then the Antichrist would have been emerge as the rule of Israel and the rule of the world and declare I am the Messiah. Hmm? And when it is accepted, he rubs his hands and say, mission accomplished. It is at that time that Allah raises a man from the seed of Nabi Muhammad and he is known as the Imam al-Mahdi. And with him, Darul Islam is restored, and we have a subject, we have that subject in this series of lectures. Imam al Mahdi and the return of the Caliphate, that is one of our topics. When Darul Islam is restored in the Arabian Peninsula, that is goodbye, goodbye to the American Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Back into the garbage bin from where it came out in the first place. But when Darul Islam is restored in the Arabian Peninsula, Imam al Mahdi, that is the most significant, real, and tangible threat to the state of Israel. And so the Antichrist attacks. The Prophet said that the attack would come from the east. He pointed 20 times to the east. 
east of Medina is not Japan, <laughs> something closer. He said that the Antichrist will ride on a donkey. Remember the last lecture? The donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. The donkey will have his ears stretched out wide. And so therefore, when the Antichrist attacks, it's going to be fighter aircraft. East of Medina is the Saudi, used to be Saudi now, is the American Air Force base in Tehran. So it's an aerial attack. The angels guard Makkah and Medina and the Prophet said that the attack will be diverted to Damascus. And that is where the confrontation takes place between the Antichrist and the Imam. The Antichrist and the Imam. It is at that time that the son of Mary would come down with his hands resting on the wings of two angels at that time. When the son of Mary comes down, then the son of Mary, the true Messiah, kills the false Messiah. After the false Messiah is killed, then Allah addresses the true Messiah and says to him, go up the mountain, which is a mountain in Jerusalem. The last wave of Gog and Magog are now released. And they surround the true Messiah, the son of Mary. They shoot their arrows up into the sky. This is symbolic language. Don't ask me to explain it because I can't. But there is a young scholar of Islam who will come, maybe he's a baby now. 30 years from day he, today he will come and explain it to you inshallah. They shoot their arrows up into the sky. They say, we've killed those who are on earth. Now let us kill those who are in the heavens above. God and Magad. And Allah allows the arrows to come back down with blood on them. Don't ask me to explain this because I cannot explain. Events are going to unfold tomorrow which will help us to understand this. Then the son of Mary raises his hands and he prays to the Lord to destroy God and Mother. And then Allah sends a little creature, a little insect, which attacks them at the back of their neck. And all those who are God and Magad will all fall down. The rest of mankind, no, only God and Magad. They'll all fall down, paralyzed, and by next morning they'll be all dead. I thought maybe it's because of the...